300 feet, which puts us about 8,000 feet higher than Niagara Falls. Right around here, you might be noticing the train start to slow down a bit. And that's because we are reaching our first switch and siding. This is a place along our tracks where two tracks line up and trains can pass each other. Now, because we are the second train up the mountain today, we won't be having to make any stops here just yet. But on the way down, we just might have to. This, however, might be a good opportunity to go ahead and introduce yourselves to your neighbor. Your name, hometown, favorite color, favorite sports team, things like that. But of course, if your neighbor says their favorite sports team are the Patriots, please let them know that this is their stop. <laughs>
if you grab those same yeah. silver knobs and pull them all the way back down, well, the air conditioning will immediately filter back in. I only ask, of course, that you are courteous of those sitting around you that might be wearing Texas, California, or Florida t-shirts and are used to a slightly warmer climate.
Peak is not the tallest on the list. That goes to Mount Elbert near the town of Leadville, Colorado. In fact, Pikes Peak doesn't even come second nor third. It comes 31st in its own state of Colorado. At 14,115 feet. So then, if it's not the tallest, you might be wondering what makes it so famous and popular. And that's mostly due to its location. Pikes Peak stands alone on the eastern slope, while all of the other 14ers are tucked away into the greater Rocky Mountains. This, of course, makes Pikes Peak the perfect landmark for explorers and pilgrims coming to the west. every one of us is going to owe 25 cents when we get back to the depot. Of course, though, if we see the one with the antlers, that'll be a buck.
sound like there were a lot of them. There's one. Yeah. I just saw one. What made you stop them?
state of Wisconsin. Maybe some people from Wisconsin. I always like to ask that because the founder of our railway was actually from Kenosha, Wisconsin. His name was Solomon Simmons and he was an inventor among other things. And of the things he invented was a telegraph line insulator. So one day Simmons took a three day burrow ride to the summit of Pikes Peak to inspect those insulators. And when he reached the summit, he thought the views were spectacular. But he said that the burrow ride was the most uncivilized thing that he had ever done. So Simmons went home to Kenosha, raised $1.5 million, and came back to begin work on the railway. It took them 18 months over a span of three years, and the first paying passengers were on June 30th of 1891. Any guesses to how much a ticket cost all the way back then?
Henry of the Louisiana Purchase. When he and his men noticed a large mountain out in the distance. Thinking they could see a great deal from the summit, naturally they headed right towards it. Unfortunately, it was November. They were waist deep in snow, still in their short sleeved summer uniforms and dwindling on supplies. So they were forced to turn back, only reaching about as high as we are now. In fact, Pike never reached the summit of the mountain that bears his name. But he didn't call it Pike's Peak. In his journals, he called it the Grand Peak and assumed that it was over 18,000 feet tall and that no man would ever reach the summit. It wasn't until later when people were reading his journals that everyone started to call it Pike's Peak.
me a favor at this time and pull out a timepiece. This could be a watch or a cell phone. And the reason I ask that is because this train will leave from a very specific time from the summit and that'll be on my watch, not yours. Right now my watch says it is 10.25, so make sure yours says something similar to 10.25. We will be leaving the summit at exactly 11.20, but the time I'll need you to remember is 11.10. At 11.10, you'll hear three loud blasts of the train horn, and that'll be your boarding call. And about this time, you just start heading back to the train. If you are not back on board by 11.20, something very mysterious will happen to your body. You will be transformed into a hiker. But of course, we don't want that, so make sure you are paying attention to the 1110 boarding call and the 1120 departure time, and I'll make sure to remind you when we get closer to the summit. While we're on the topic of the summit, I'll go ahead and let you know of some of the things you'll find up there. At the very top is the Summit House, which is a small souvenir and snack shop. But if you were looking to find any souvenirs of your train ride today, you probably won't find it there, since they are independently owned and operated from us. The only place you can find train souvenirs are here on the train or back down at our depot. They do have a great range of other souvenirs, however, like sweaters, if that's something that interests you. They also have a great range of snacks up at the Summit House, including their world-famous donuts. It's very difficult to bake or fry anything at such a high elevation, so you might want to check those out. Of the things they sell, there is only one thing that I won't allow back on board. And that is popcorn. Popcorn has a nasty habit of making a mess and falling beneath our floorboards into our engine compartments. And then we, when we lock these trains up at night, the mice that like to sneak into the shop like to eat that popcorn, but occasionally mistake it for copper wiring, making for some rather expensive repairs. So the only thing I ask is you please don't bring popcorn back on the train. Or as we all like to say, please no corn on the cog. Oh.
have free range cattle out there. So when they go through, you don't want one of those cows breaking a leg. That's a pretty hefty bill. So I used to make sure I, if I shot a prey dog, I'd cover up the hole, make sure it was covered real good, and do that. But it was every summer.
Welcome you all now to the summit of Pikes Peak, America's favorite mountain. To give you guys some perspective, to the east is to the is to the two seat side in the Colorado in the city of Colorado Springs, and Lonely Park will be facing directly due north in the small town of Woodland Park. Welcome everyone to Pikes Peak. Yeah. <laughs> 